Welcome back. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over the Plot9 package. Plot9 is used to create charts and graphs. Plot9 is based on ggplot2. ggplot2 is a data visualization package for the statistical programming language R. ggplot2 is an implementation of Grammar of Graphics. For the imports, we're going to import Plot9, Pandas, Vega Datasets, PyDataset, Pazani, and iPyWidgets. For more information on packages and install instructions, visit the Python package index and search for the package of interest. A few notes before we get started. AES is short for aesthetics, and aesthetics are used to create new ggplot objects and at the geom level. Labs is short for labels, and you can use labs to create your labels. To create a quick plot, you can use qplot to create simple quick plots. Plot9 themes are a way to customize the non-data components of your plots, including titles, labels, and so on. There is also a Python package called ggplot that's separate from Plot9. See the Python package index for details on ggplot. For this tutorial, we will mainly be using Plot9. For our first example, to create a quick plot, you can use plot9.qplot. Put in your x and y data, and your main data source. And in this example, we have assigned cylinder to the color. And here we get our quick plot, which is a scatter plot. For the rest of our examples, we're going to be using this pattern to create our plots. And for the pattern, the first thing we do is to create a new ggplot object. Using ggplot, then we put in our data. And for the mapping, we use aesthetics, and we put in the x and y data and any additional aesthetics. Then we can add our layers. So here we have created our ggplot object and assigned it to plot. Then we use that variable with a plus and we add our layers. For our first example, we're going to use some stocks data from the Vega datasets. Then we create our new ggplot object using ggplot. We put in our data, our mapping using aesthetics, and for the aesthetics we put in x and y. We have assigned that to the line plot variable. Then we use the line plot variable with the plus, and now we can add our layers. The first layer for our line plot are the lines. Then we add some labels. And then we add some annotations. So using the geom line, we have our blue line here. Using labels, we add a title. And using the annotation, we add our annotation here. Here we have another example with multiple lines. Once again, we create our ggplot object. Then we use the plus and we add our layers, including the legend here. If you would like to save a plot, create the plot like this, and then you can use the plot variable.save. Next, let's go over some bar plot examples. We're going to use the arthritis dataset from Pi Dataset. Here we have created our new ggplot object. Then we use that object with the plus, and we use geom bar to add the bars. And then we use the facet grid to split the bar charts by treatment, placebo versus treated. And here we have some notes on some additional ways to create facet grids. Next, we have a stacked bar chart using the movies dataset from the Vega datasets. And this example uses the geom call. We have added a thousand separator to the y axis and rotated the x axis labels. We create our ggplot object. Then we added the bar charts with geom call. Here we add the thousand separator. And for the comma format, we use the Mazzani package. And then here we use a theme to rotate the x axis labels. Here we have another bar chart example, 
showing the mean miles per gallon by origin using our CARS data from the Vega datasets. Next, let's go over some scatter plot examples. Once again, we're going to use the CARS data. We create our new ggplot object. We put in the data, the mapping using the aesthetics, and for the x-axis we use weight in pounds, and for the y-axis we use miles per gallon. Then we add the layers. And for the scatter plot, we're going to use geom point. We set our shape, our size, the color, and the alpha. Here we have an additional scatter plot example. Now notice, for the color, we assign the cylinders using factor. And for the size, we assign horsepower. Then we use StatSmooth. And we use LM for the linear model regression line. Next, let's go over how to create a histogram. For this, we're going to use the trees dataset from Pi dataset. Now notice, for this example, we only put in the X data to show the distribution of heights for the trees. And then we add the layers, including a rug plot, which you can see here. And for the histogram, we use geom histogram. For this example, we use the trees data set again. However, in this case, we have created a density plot. Next, we have a box plot example using the cars data. To create the box plot, we use geom box plot. And for this box plot example, we use factor with the cylinders. Next, we have an example for the violin plot. And for this example, we have added the geom jitter, which is basically a scatter plot similar to Seaborn strip plot. And you can see those points here. Let's go over a heat map example. Once again, we're going to use the CARS dataset. To put the dataset in the form that we need, we use this code here. For the heat map, we use GM tile. And here we set our color scheme. We use GM text to add the text labels. And we use the theme to rotate the x-axis labels. Next, let's go over an example of how to use Plot9 with IPy widgets to add some interactivity to the charts. The first thing we did is to create our widget, which is an int slider. Then here we create our function, which will create our histogram. Then here we create the interaction between the function and the widget. Now we can use the slider to change the number of bins in the histogram. And finally, we have an example where you can use the R programming language in a Python Jupyter Notebook using the RPy2 package. So the first thing we did is we imported RPy2. Then we use percent load extension, rpy2.ipython, and you just run that once. Then where we want to put the R code, we use percent percent %r. Then we load the ggplot2 library. Here we load our data set, and then we can create our plots, almost the same as we did with plot9. That's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.